the bathroom's around the right. Thank awesome. you. Awesome. You're welcome. My name is Bobby Overman. I'm a community engagement librarian and nonprofit specialist here at the library. Today's event is the Human Library event. It is an event to get conversation going between people who have been stereotyped and discriminated against and other people who maybe have um, preconceived notions or they've never spoken with anybody, who maybe is autistic, who is bipolar, who has Tourette syndrome. So it's really just a way to get that conversation going. I am a human book about an amputee. I became an amputee um, because my senior year of high school, I'm driving home, I was hit by a semi. In my everyday life, I think I have to plan a little bit of extra time. Most things that a person with two arms, person, like a two arm, let's say, does something in 10 minutes, I'll plan 15 minutes. Just because I know there's going to be a hiccup somewhere, or maybe it's going to take me a little bit longer to tie my shoes, or style my hair, something like that. Sadly, a lot of people think that if you're an amputee, you probably have a mental disability. So you might get talked to like a child, or that I'm undereducated, even though I do have master's classes. Um, a lot of times people think that I'm not even capable of most tasks and I do appreciate people asking me if I need help, which is nice when you go to the grocery store or something like that, could we help you out with your 30 bags? Well, sure, you can help me out with my 30 bags, but if I have four, I can get my four bags. You know, that's okay. But um, just thinking that we need help with every single thing. Well, not necessarily true and maybe the perception that we're always sad and that we can't be happy people anymore because we can we can have a wonderful fulfilling life and we can be just as adventurous as everyone else and, oh do you like to go out hiking yep of course I do and maybe I shouldn't climb on those rocks but I'm going to do it and we'll see what happens <laughs> Part of what we do is inclusivity and civil dialogue, and so I think a lot of times people will be wandering around, maybe they see someone who's homeless, maybe they see someone who's autistic, and they just automatically think they know everything about that person. They, maybe they put that person in a box, or they think, well, I'm sure I already know their story. So having an event like this, you just get to sit down and you get to have a, an honest conversation with somebody who's open, like our t-shirts say, don't judge a book by its cover. That's what our volunteers are wanting to say. You know, go ahead and ask me the questions and I'll answer what I can about my situation. Um, I started my life as a very good Catholic. Um, and I had a strong belief in the religion and I studied a lot. Um, I used to carry around a Bible with me and highlight certain passages and things like that. I took my faith very um, seriously. And when I was in ninth grade, I had a young cousin who was five years old die in a tragic accident. And that's when I turned to the Virgin Mary. And I developed a very close relationship with the Virgin Mary um, to find comfort after that. And I think that was the opening to the goddess for me. And as I got older in the church, I, was, I kept trying to be like Mary. And I'm not like Mary. I am not meek and mild, and I can't say thy will be done. That's just not in my makeup. So I spent about three years as an atheist, and I was very angry atheist. And then I realized that I was still a spiritual person. So how could I be spiritual and yet not give up my autonomy? So I was directed to the book Drawing Down the Moon, which for my generation is the gateway book for paganism. And it's a survey of all these different kinds of pagan religions. And I was drawn to Druidism, 
and to witchcraft immediately. And I think that was because of the ceremony that's involved with it and the structure that's involved with it. So the more I got into it, the more I studied. I studied for a year and a day, which is traditional, and I decided to go into witchcraft. And that's really where I was called to go. So that again was in 1991 and I've never looked back. It's definitely the right spiritual path for me. I cast spells, but I think that's sort of a, a weird way of saying it for someone who's actually doing spell work. I don't say I cast a spell. The word cast sounds a little Disney. <laughs> And I know that's the way that, you know, the average American would think of it, but really um, the best definition I've heard of magic comes from Oberon Zell, he's from the Church of All Worlds out in California, and he calls it probability enhancement. A cardinal rule of traditional witchcraft is if it harms none, do what you will. So that includes not harming yourself. just put yourself in someone else's shoes maybe. I mean a lot of times I think maybe you're a little um, embarrassed or you just are reserved about asking somebody like so how did you become an amputee or what does it mean to be bipolar or how does that affect your life you know so I think having that conversation I think does bring people closer you know because suddenly they're like oh I know somebody who's autistic and I know every you know and now I've had that conversation with the person and so I think it does bring someone closer and at the very least maybe you don't have the same stereotypes in your head that you did before you spoke with that person. Okay.